Let's go! Hey everybody, Coach Scott here. And today I want to talk to you about how to fight fair and win every time. So today's topic I feel has great importance as it relates to becoming all that we were created to be. And that is relationships. If I told you that me and my wife never disagree and never have an argument, we never fight, we always live in perfect harmony all the time, that would not be a true statement. However, defining the rules of how you argue or how you fight with someone that you care about is very important and it's much more important than trying to never have a disagreement or to win an argument at all costs. So here's some tips and strategies I wanna to talk to you that have really, really helped me and Gwen over the years stay connected, stay transparent with each other, uh, and really, really have an authentic relationship. The first is you gotta have courage and wisdom to get help if you need it. Many people don't do this and they're so prideful or they're so arrogant that they don't get help when they really, really need it. And that's why one half of all marriages end within the first seven years. But the average couple, according to a study I just read, the average couple waits almost six years before seeking the help that could possibly save their marriage if they would have just gotten help earlier. And this, by the way, is a recipe for failure. And you're going to live in un an unhappy situation for far too long if you don't reach out and get some help. Number two, you've got to control your inner conversation. You've got to monitor those words. You don't have to say everything that pops in your mind, especially if it's negative or if it's hurtful to the other person. There's a whole world and conversation that goes on in my mind that never comes out verbally. And again, that's because I've learned how to monitor that inner conversation. I don't always do it perfectly, but I've learned how to make sure that if I say something, I try very carefully not to say something that's gonna be hurtful and personal in nature. And number three, I always say become a velvet brick. And this is as you discuss your problems, as you talk about your issues, you need to do it in a gentle but firm way. By the way, conversations that start off with that harsh, loud, critical uh, voice, that tends to escalate very, very quickly. So remember, when your tone and your emotions are out of balance, you cannot get to the core root of the problem and have any real chance for resolution or change. So make sure that you understand to start the conversation off respectable and have some sensitivity with it. That's called the velvet brick approach. And number four, you've got to accept equality and you gotta know your role. A relationship is only successful when you understand that a true partnership occurs when both people, both husband, wife, partners, uh, your friends, brother, sister, whatever it is, accept influence from each other. Remember that you're not there to compete with each other, you're there to complete each other. And when I learned this, this really gave me a level of freedom to really be open and honest and do it in a way to understand that we're teammates, we're on the same team, we're fighting the same battle and we can do it better together. And number five, you've got to have, you've got to have high standards. Successful relationships have very high standards and most of the time from the very beginning. So you can't just let somebody talk to you and treat you any old kind of way. You just can't, you, if, you're, if somebody's always speaking down to you and treating you negative, that is not a powerful and positive relationship. And the lower level of tolerance for that type of bad behavior, uh, it, you know, is gonna actually make you happier and more successful long-term in your relationship. So remember, you can't, don't, I don't let anybody just talk to me any old kind of way. You can't talk to me like that. If you wanna have a conversation with me, then we, we got to speak to it respectfully and, and like adults. And if you'll do that, you'll get a lot more mileage from that discussion. And number six, you gotta know when the journey's over. Successful relationships have, every, have this in common. They know how to end an argument. Now this has taken me a long time to figure this out, particularly early on in my marriage, when I just felt like, you know, I had to win, I had to get the last word in. And again, that's not very helpful and it's not very healthy. And, it, and it's, in many cases, it's hurtful. So you gotta always remember, it's not about winning. It's about restoration. It's about healing. It's about finding common ground. It's about edification and making sure that you're lifting your spouse or your friend or your family member or whoever you're in an argument with, your business partner, whatever it is. It's about finding that common ground so that you can continue to fight the good fight together. And if an argument gets too heated, 
you got to have the courage and strength to walk away and take a little break. You can always approach the subject again when you have a more calm, even killed manner. So that's very, very important. And number seven, remember it's all about deposits and withdrawals. Deposits and withdrawals. There's a good rule of thumb called the three to one principle. You see, couples that make at least three times as many positive statements to each other and about each other and about their relationship as opposed to the one negative ones or negative comments, they always seem to have plenty of equity in their emotional bank accounts. And so again, if you're gonna make a withdrawal, and every now and then you have to do that, you better make sure you have enough deposited in to cover that withdrawal. And finally, <clears throat> this is the most important piece about how to win arguments, how to restore broken relationships, how to keep the fire going, and how to keep the, that relationship moving towards the common goal. And that is, God is the ultimate healer of all conflict and hurt. And sometimes we fall into a, uh, this trap of placing improper expectations on other people. And that's very dangerous because what we're trying to do is we're hoping that, that they can satisfy a need in our life that really they're not capable of satisfying. But here's the key and here's the great news. God will always satisfy your needs if you stay hungry for him, that he will always be a provider for you. And so this is something that I've learned, I've had to learn. I think it's of vital importance that you understand how to build those relationships, how to keep those relationships nurtured, and how to be the best you that you can possibly be. And if you'll do that, I believe and declare that you will be all that you were created to be. So God bless you guys. Take care. We'll see you soon.